EIA and our clients rely on electricity data every day, and our survey respondents are central to helping us collect the data we need to fully understand industry trends. Therefore, we want to make sure our respondents understand how to properly fill out our Form EIA 860M monthly update to the annual electric generator report. We hope that this video will make your reporting process easier and help us ensure our data are as accurate as possible. To begin filling out the EIA 860 monthly form, you should go to the single sign-on login page, enter your user ID and password, and then click log on to access your form dashboard. Your form dashboard shows all of your EIA forms. Click on EIA 860 to start completing this form. The EIA 860 monthly form has five different sections. These sections are Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3, Schedule 4, and Error Log. All of these sections serve very specific data collection purposes and contain unique information and questions. We will go through every schedule to give you a better understanding of the EIA 860 monthly form. When you open your form, you will be brought to Schedule 1. Schedule 1 contains basic identification information, such as your name and your supervisor's name. In the top right corner is the operating month and operating year, and any date of your report must be your status as of the last day of that month. For example, if the operating month and year is 8, 2020, your data must be as of August 31, 2020. Your next steps depend on the type of plant you are reporting for. If you are reporting for a plant that is not yet operational, then you must fill out Schedule 2. If you are reporting for a plant that is undergoing an uprate, a derate, a repowering, a retirement, a combination of these modifications, or any other modification, then you must fill out Schedule 3. If you are filing out the form for a plant that is not yet operational as well as a plant that is undergoing some sort of change, then you must fill out both Schedule 2 and Schedule 3. Let's start with Schedule 2. Remember that you only need to fill out Schedule 2 for plants that are not yet in operation. In the top left corner, you will see the name of your plant. The search bars below the plant name let you toggle between plants and generators. If you are reporting for multiple plants, you will use the top bar to toggle between them. If those plants have multiple generators, you will use the bottom bar to toggle between those generators. Also, be sure to double check that the operator ID and the utility name in the top right corner are correct. Next is the main data section. You must fill out all of the fields in this section for each plant. We will now go over three fields in particular, which are highlighted. The status code is the current construction status of your individual plant. Double click in this box and select from a complete list of statuses. The plan current effective date is the date your plant plans to begin operation. Please keep in mind that the form asks for data not based on the current month but based on the operating month, which is always the previous month. Finally, if you make any changes to the plan current effective date or any other changes that the form flags, you must select one of the provided reasons in the Reasons for Change field. If you select Other as your reason, you must leave a detailed explanation in Schedule 4, which we will discuss later. Lastly, you only have to answer the four questions at the bottom of Schedule 2 if your plant has gone operational and has photovoltaic as its prime mover field 2. If your plant does not meet this condition, then you do not have to fill out these four questions. Now that we covered Schedule 2, let's move on to Schedule 3. Remember that you only need to complete Schedule 3 if you are reporting for a plant that is undergoing an uprate, a derate, a repowering retirement, a combination of these modifications, or any other modification. Similar to Schedule 2, Schedule 3 has the plant code and name in the top left, with two toggle bars below them and operator information in the top right. Below the toggle bars is the existing information section. Respondents very rarely have to make changes to this section. Below the existing information section is the uprate section. If your plant is uprating, you must complete the highlighted fields in this section. In line 7, if you select uprate cancelled, you must provide a reason for this change in the reason for change section at the bottom of schedule 3. You typically don't need to make changes to lines 8 and 9. In line 10, 
if you change the completion date for the update, you must provide a reason for this change in the Reason for Change section. Below the Update section is the Derate section. If your plant is derating, you must complete the highlighted fields in this section. In line 11, if you select Derate Cancelled, you must provide a reason for this change in the Reason for Change section. You typically don't need to make any changes to lines 12 and 13. In line 14, if you change the completion date for the D rate, you must provide a reason for this change in the Reason for Change section. Below the D rate section is the new net capacity section, lines 15 and 16. You do not need to enter data into this section. These values are automatically calculated from the up rate and D rate sections. Below the new net capacity section is the repowering section. If your plant is repowering, you must complete the highlighted fields in this section. In line 17, if you select Repower Cancelled, you must provide a reason for this change in the Reason for Change section. If your plant has a new prime mover and energy source, you must complete lines 18 and 19. If your plant does not have a new prime mover and energy source, you must leave those fields empty. In line 20, if you change the completion date for the repowering, you must provide a reason for this change in the Reason for Change section. Below the repowering section is the retirement section. If your plant is retiring, meaning that this specific generator is shutting down, you must complete the highlighted fields in this section. In line 21, if you select retirement cancelled, you must provide a reason for this change in the reason for change section. In line 22, if you change the completion date for the retirement, you must provide a reason for this change in the reason for change section. Below the retirement section is the other modification section. If your plant is undergoing any sort of modification that isn't an uprate, derate, repowering, or retirement, you must complete the highlighted fields in this section. In line 23, if you select other mod cancelled, then you must provide a reason for this change in the reason for change section. In line 24, if you change the completion date for the other modification, you must provide a reason for this change in the Reason for Change section. At the bottom of Schedule 3 is the Reason for Change section. In this field, you must select the reason for any major changes you have made in Schedule 3. If you select Other, you must provide an explanation in Schedule 4. Now that we have covered the main data entry sections of the form, let's move on to the last two sections. Schedule 4 is where you may enter any additional explanations if necessary. For example, if you selected other as your reason for change in Schedule 2 or Schedule 3, you would explain that reason further in this section. To leave a comment, you fill in the schedule and line number, and then you write your comment under notes. You may also leave any additional information in this section that you think the analyst processing your form should know. Now that we've discussed Schedule 4, Let's move on to the error log. The last section of the form is the error log. Any errors you made during submission will appear in this section. To amend an error, click on the box with the X on it in the far right column and leave your comment. An analyst will view your comment after submission, make any necessary adjustments, and reach out to you with any questions. After you have filled out all required schedules and checked the error log, you must submit your form. To do so, click on the box at the very top of your form that says Submit. Now you have successfully submitted your EIA 860 monthly form.